right, okay, so uh, I'm going to hand everybody over to Tim now, who's going to explain all the magical USB-powered gubbins inside this pack. Say hello, Tim. Hello. Uh, thank you for inviting me today. <laughs> <laughs> this, yes. is, this is exciting. Isn't no. it exciting? Yeah. Um, basically, I was asked to have a look at trying to produce the both the lighting effect here um, for the power meter and also the cyclotron. I'm not a Ghostbusters um fan as such and I'm, I'm good I like you can't say you're not you can't say you're not a valid Ghostbusters fan you have well got... I'm I've sort of got into it now obviously <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> um but so I, this was a bit of a learning experience I had a look around to see what what was around on the market for doing the effects and decided that I would tackle it myself because the, the one or two reasons the price and the effects weren't were preset in some cases so you couldn't actually do your your own interpretation of what they should be um, so to do that, I've been looking at the new, look here um, behind this panel is the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a new product from Raspberry Pi. That is a little microprocessor, which is a bit like an Arduino, but it's um, made by Raspberry Pi, obviously, and is designed to be used for these sort of projects where you've got low power consumption, uh, battery powered projects. And it's the brains of the, the system and it's running uh, micro python on there which um, is a programming language which is really simple to get to learn and really accessible for people there's lots of examples on the internet hence um, why i ended up using it and that is driving via all this wiring looms and we've got down here a device called a 16-bit port expander io port expander it sounds very complicated, but all it's doing is we see if you go back up to the um, the Raspberry Pi, we've only got a few wires coming out of that, but yet it's driving all these LEDs down here. Uh, so what this device does, the Raspberry Pi can tell it which one of these pins to switch on and off, and it expands it, uh, just one or two wires into a big array of wires and actually 16 wires in this case and that's enough to drive all these leds that we've got to drive there's one other advantage to this is in that the raspberry pi like many other modern microprocessors uses 3.3 uh, volts rather than 5 volts and the pins on it aren't 5 volt tolerant so you can't just drive an led like these leds here without using something in between and conveniently the port expander can take five volts so it does two jobs really so yeah this is this is this is all being run by uh as you with the lights all going at the moment this is all being run by a single five volt usb power pack so. exactly and if the raspberry pi has a little converter inside of it which converts the five volts down to 3.3 which it needs to run but it also provides a five volt feed which then is used to drive these high intensity leds uh, the leds were fun the uh five millimeter leds the high intensity ones to get the brightness we need to get through the uh, perspex uh, on the front of the pack and actually the um LEDs I used were clear LEDs, but they weren't diffused LEDs, and which I found to be a mistake because it gave too much of a pinpoint of light on the other side of the pack when you're looking at it. So what I did was I sanded the front of the LEDs down to make them diffused, and that gives a much better effect. It gives um, a, sort of, um, a much more fuzzy effect to the, the lighting. I also designed and printed on 3D printer a um, special holder for those LEDs, which allows you to get like a segmented effect it's like a bar graph as those leds go up um so the link, links, in, link in the description yeah, below the, as the you link say be in the description yeah, from thingiverse or, so yeah. also I've, i also designed this and john thingiverse is this little holder for the port expander which allows you to easily um slot it in and out uh, for maintenance purposes or any wiring that you need to do and we also have on thingiverse if we go back up to the pi the little holder for the um, Raspberry Pi as well which allows to keep that to be kept in place. So if we move on um, following this wiring loom through the pack we probably we're end up going, going all the way down here <laughs> up to the cyclotron, the cyclotron light. lights. Um, they again um, we need using the same LEDs to um, create the, the light source but we um, I think if you can just yeah, I've already covered that. Already. Yeah, yeah, how the lights are just a different using technique. A, yeah, a different like technique. A for polystyrene diffusing. sheet that I got the idea from a, a greetings card. So yes, 
Yeah. So, and yeah. again, th those have been driven by that port expander we were talking about before. And the uh, sequence is all programmed in the uh, Python script. And that script will automatically run on startup, um, i.e. when you put the power into the Raspberry Pi Pico. Mm -hmm. And if we go trace the wires back mm -hmm. again, and we've got this curiosity here, which yep. may be a bit of a puzzle for some people. Um, this one is a microphone. And why do we need a microphone in here? Why is it next to a speaker, Tim? Mm, exactly. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was asked if it could make somehow we could get the pack to change the lighting sequence when the noise the noise of the wand being activated um, happened occurred, and the obvious way to do that is to put a microphone in without having to interface the two devices and get into complexities of that and possibly possibly damaging one or the other or you know all the the difficulties in interfacing devices. This the very simple way of approach that I took to that was to use one of these microphones. And this microphone that's embedded in here, again, the link will be um, In the description below, yeah, yep. As usual. <laughs> um, this microphone is a threshold microphone. There's a little grub screw here, which you can just about see. And that is used to adjust its sensitivity. The um, microphone will um, act like a switch. And once the noise going into the microphone reaches a certain level, it will activate the switch. And that switch is, again, detected all the way back by the Raspberry Pi over there to um, change the lighting sequence and make it a different speed in this case or do whatever else you want to do and that was just a really neat way we, uh, that we found to um, have, uh, get that sort of coupling between the effects without really having to deeply interface them and uh, I, I was quite chuffed with that idea because yeah. I would say it's, it's my fault because of the Spengler wand with it being the Spengler wand and the audio is being created by the Spengler wand out into the um, sound, uh, the sound bar, which is now being cannibalized and taken apart. Uh, I didn't want to kind of ruin either the possibility of breaking the Spengler wand or or the amplifier or any other kind of system. So the thoughts were, if we could create something that would detect the sound, if the sound was loud within the pack at a certain level, it would trigger faster lights. So. Um, I'll, uh, yes, so, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that, that covers the, the basic principles of what's going on. Again, the um, th on Thingiverse, uh, we've got a link to the housing for this microphone in case anybody wants to use that. So, Tim, could you just demonstrate the uh, thing by shouting into the microphone and we should hopefully see the... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'll shout into the microphone if you want. You hold the... You, right, let's okay. switch, switch okay. around. Switch around. I'll, I'll go on. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a turf cameraman. Yes, as long as you can... You don't just see my head, but uh, yes. Um, so we've got the lights there. So if I shout into the microphone, it should he make sure that the That's lights start speeding up. There we we can definitely see that. Uh, so they sped up, and as soon as it stops again... And then we shout again and it starts speeding up. So this should be the sound of the Spengler uh, inside the case. Yes, there we go. And that works rather well. Yeah. And I'll hand the control of the camera back. Okay, so I think that's that just about sorts the sound and the lighting out. Um, I think we're also talking about trying to get a circuit diagram for this as well. So yes, so a... there will be a circuit diagram. I will add it to the description below in a link somewhere. Um, so you'll have all the links. Uh, in the description below as everybody says and we'll uh, so we'll make it freely available so anyone on the Ben Kent forum on Facebook I will also put the links within the post and the proton pack builders I will also put it in there so I would also thanks to Tim yeah yes sorry one last thing part of the reason for the Raspberry Pi choice was it's a really low cost device it's only on, a few give quid us a, give us some prices um I, I I wouldn't know what it is today but I know the postage was more than the actual Raspberry Pi right. it's that sort of level it's only a few quid uh yeah. so 3d printing costs and there's so two boards so we've we've got um, yeah I mean it, it's a couple a few quid for um, each of these components is pr probably well under fifteen um, pounds in total with all the, the the heat shrink and everything there, which keeps the cost re you know a lot for a lot lot less than some of the other options that I saw out there. Right. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Tim. So thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you when the uh, next video with a finished pack, hopefully. Bye. So from the program in the pie, turn it on.
and then it runs a standard sequence. Because it's programmable, I can actually change the different startups. I'll show you at the bottom. I'll turn it off. Turn it on. There's no lights in the cyclotron until it kicks in. There we go.